kind of hop noppy relatives and be why to hushka opi miha. So basically, I just said good morning, good day. My name is Opi Miha in the Tudalo language. All right, relatives, we're getting back into it. We are back into the Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, American Indian history families. All right. So as you can see on the screen, we are starting back up again with the almond or almond family. And uh, here's a picture of the almond family. And uh, we're going to read the caption under this. Um, so it kind of shows who the people are, I guess, in order here. Um, Leah Langston, uh, Virginia Almond, born 1883. Ellen Almond, born 1880. Reverend Alexander Almond, Pinky Almond, born 1860. And Delilah Almond, born 1877. And it uh, looks like this photo is from the Smithsonian. Not sure why they have it, but okay. Um, so let's, let's dive in. Almond, Almond family. The Almond family probably originated in Gloucester County, Virginia. Members of the Almond, Almond family were Thornton, born, say, 1758. Enlisted in the revolution for three years as a private and was in the muster and payroll of Captain John Gregory's company of the 15th Virginia Regiment from December 26, 1776 to April 1779. When the regiment was at Middlebrook from June 1779 to November 1779. He was in John Hobbs com Company of the 5th and the 11th Regiment with Robert Mush, an Indian. Ah, interesting. And Bartholomew Holmes, a yellow complexion soldier, who were both from King William County. And then uh, it actually shows where you can uh, click on this. Uh, and see the the uh, see it on ancestry and also uh, fold three. Um, that's a good place to look for family members as well, ancestors that uh, you know fought in wars or were enlisted in the military. All right, he is not listed on any record after the war and did not apply for a bounty land. Okay, let's keep it moving. Uh, Martha Almond, born, say, 1760. Sally Almond, taxable on two cattle in Gloucester County in 1788 and 1789. Jenny Almond, born about 1761, head of a Gloucester County household of 10 other three in 1810. She, or Jenny the Younger, was uh, apparently the Jane Almond, who was counted as a 99-year-old black, wo black woman counted in the 1860 census for Gloucester County. Keep it moving. Uh, Edward, born, say, 1769, taxable in Gloucester County on a free tithe from 1790 to 1797, a mulatto taxable from 1809 to 1820. James Almond, born, say, 1769, taxable in Gloucester County in 1790 and 1791. A mulatto, taxable in 1813 and 1814. He was a free Negro, taxable in New Kent County from 1805 to 1809. All right, next we got Kit Almond, born before 1770, a free Negro, taxable in... Nansamon County on two cattle, 16 horses, and three slaves in 1815 and 1816, and head of a Nansamon County household of eight 
pre-colored in 1820. All right, next we got Zachariah Morn, say 1775, taxable in Gloucester County in 1796 and 1797. Next we got Jenny, the younger, head of a Gloucester County household of 10 other free in 1810. Uh, we got Mildred, head of a Gloucester County household of eight other free in 1810, taxable on the slave from 1817 to 1820. Alice, head of a Gloucester County household of six other free in 1810. Lewis, born, say, 1783, a mulatto, taxable living in Guinea Quarter of Gloucester County in 1804 and 1805. Then next we have uh, Easter, head of a Norfolk borough, Virginia household of three other free in 1810, listed as a mulatto in Gloucester County in 1813. Grace Almonds, head of a Washington, D.C. household of uh, four other free in 1800. Thornton Almond, Born about 1812, Warner Almond registered in Gloucester County in uh, August 1827, a mulatto man about 27 years of age, six feet, six feet half an inch high, born of free, born of free parents in the county of Gloucester. He used the papers to register in York County on December 19, 1838. All right, let's keep it moving. So it says, Martha Almond, born, say, 1760, was presented by the Isle of Wight County Court on May 4th, 1780, for having an Ill illegitimate mulatto child. She was the mother of Randall, born, say, 1780, son of Patty Almond, ordered, ordered bound apprentice to John Anthony by the Isle of Wight County Court on January 4, 1796. He was a free Negro taxable on a horse in Isle of Wight County in 1806. His wife Martha received $40 by the will of her father, Thomas Jones, a free man of color, which was proved on January 1, 1810. Uh, he purchased 42 acres in Isle of Wight County on uh, September 15th, 1810 for $120. All right, let's keep it moving. All right, next we're going to get into uh, Thorn, Thornton. Thornton Almond, born about 1812, was taxable in Gloucester County in the list of free Negroes and mulattoes in 1833 and 1834. About 1835, he moved to King William County where he married Eliza Major, According to the marriage records of his children, he was head of a St. John's Parish, King William County household of one free color, man 24 to 35 years of age in 1840, and then was counted in King William County as a free Negro or mulatto above the age of 16, who was taxable on a horse from 1842 to 1852. He purchased 50 acres of land on the uh, Mattapony River in King William County, on Canoe Creek and Satterwhite's Creek on September 2nd, 1841 for $150. And then it shows that uh, it was witnessed by Richard Dungy. And on uh, August 1st, 1844, purchased land adjoining this to, adjoining this of unstated acreage. Apparently, the other half of the 50-acre tract he purchased in 1841. On March 11, 1852, he purchased 67 acres in King William County, King William County, adjoining Sterling S. Thornton for $400. He was a mulatto farmer, counted in the 1850 census, for King William County with $350. Um, living with wife Eliza and children and then it says uh, William 
Betsy, Adelaide, Ellen Thornton, John, and Alexander Allman, one year old, who appears in the photo above. He was, 40, he was a 40-year-old mulatto counted in 1860 census with Eliza, age 46, William, 25, Thornton, 18, Dick, 14, John, 12, and Mary, 8. Black families, let me see, black families key two pence and major were living in adjoining households. So I guess that's the surnames of the other families. Um, he served in the 29th Connecticut Volunteer Infantry Colored during the Civil War. His wife, Eliza, received a pension for his service. His son-in-law, Terrell Bradby, who served as a pilot, stated in his application to the U.S. Claims Commission that a number, that a number of the Indians, hmm, that a number, <laughs> man, I can't make this stuff up. Okay. <laughs> that a number of the Indians from King William County served in the war for the Union. U.S. Color Troops, military service records, and it shows where you can find that info. And then it says on May 8, 1868, the Mattapani Indians complained to the governor that to the governor that Thornton was blocking the road on his land, which led from Indian Town to the main road. Uh, let's see, the main road. And then it says uh, he did not appear in the 1870 King William County Census when his wife, Eliza Allman, was a 58-year-old 50 Indian. Wow. With $1,400 in real estate. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm just tripping. that This Indian word is coming up quite a bit here. Um, yeah. Listed with daughter Mary C. Allman, Testimony taken in a chancery suit after his death indicated that Thornton went to prison for a time. So perhaps this is so perhaps that is why he was not counted in the 1870 census, or he may have been away on business, as he was listed in the Richmond City Business Directory for King William County in 1869. He left a uh, December 9th, 1878 King William County will by which he left 25 acres called Fairyfield to his son, William, left his daughter, Mary Eliza Allman, 50 acres, which he had purchased from S.S. Thornton, left the proceeds of the wood yard to his wife, Eliza, during her lifetime and at her death left the balance of his estate to be divided among his sons, daughters, and the children of his deceased daughter. Um, he made his wife um, executor, executress, exec, executor. However, she did not prove the will because she felt it favored his daughters over his sons. Eliza died in May 1892 and a long chancery case ensued, which named all of his children and many of his grandchildren. His, his uh, estate distributed $626 among the heirs. And it shows where you can find that information. His children married other descendants of African-American families that became members of the Mattapani and Pamunkey tribes. His descendants and their spouses made up of 41 of the 50 Indians in the Mattapani Indian town in 1900, and 31 of the 84 Indians counted on the uh, Pamunkey Reservation in 1910. He and his wife, Elijah Major, were the parents of William, born about 1836, Eliza, born about 1838, daughter of Thornton Allman and Eliza Major, married uh, Terrell Bradley Bradby, son of William Bradley, or Bradby, and Dicey Sampson.
on uh, September 24th, 1857 in King William County. Adelaide, born about 1840, called Adeline Castillo a mulatto when she was counted in the 1860 census with her husband, 20-year-old mulatto Norman Castillo and their children. And it says, um, Ellen, born about 1842, called the daughter of Thornton and Eliza Major when she married Sterling Bradley or Bradby, born about 1827, son of Billy and Dicey Sampson, on uh, May 19th, 1858, in a King William County. Sterling was murdered by his brother Terrell Bradley in 1864. Ellen Bradley was called a black widow, daughter of Aldman and Eliza Bradley, when she married Elsie Page, a black widower, son of Leroy and Martha Page, in their January 28, 1886 King William County marriage. She was called Frances Ellen Page in a chancery case and stated on March 6, 1895, that she had only two children by her first husband. She was an 83-year-old Indian counted in the 1920 census, census for King William County in the household of her 60-year-old son, Charles Bradby. And it says Thornton, born about 1844, John, born about 1847, Alexander, born about 1849, Mary Eliza, born about 1854, a 16-year-old Indian, called Mary C. Alt, excuse me, Aldman, counted in the 1870 census for King William County in the household of her mother, Eliza Aldman. She married John Langston in March 1879. After the death of her father, she signed all the documents she attested to in the Chancery case. She received land by her father's will and purchased part of the land sold in the settlement of the estate. John, a farmer, and Mary E. Langston, both able to read and write, were counted on the Mattaponi Indian Reservation in the 1900 and 1910 King William County Census called Lancaster in 1900, listed with their children. Then it goes on to say that uh, William Allman, born about 1836, was counted in the 1870 Census for King William County as a 37-year-old Indian sailor who was living in the household of a 20-year-old Hester Altman who had $100 real estate and a two-year-old child, Ciola. His wife, Esther, was living at the Mattaponi Indian Town on uh, March 6, 1895, when she testified that she was a 48-year-old 40 40 year, widow. In 1910, Hester was a 60-year-old widowed Indian farmer who was allotted a farm on the Mattaponi Reservation, had three children, then living, and was listed with her children and grandchildren. The tribe of Hester's mother was said to be Powhatan and her father a white man. William and Hester were the parents of Ciola, born about 1868, Josephine, born about 1872, a black woman, daughter of William and Esther Allman, married Henry Adams, born about 1845, a black widower, son of Miles and Sarah Adams, in King William County on January 16, 1890. Henry was a nine-year-old mulatto in the 1850 King William County household of his parents, Miles and Mary Adams, Henry and Josephine's children listed in the 1910 census for King William County were 17-year-old Cora, 15-year-old William, 13-year-old Sarah E., 7-year-old Clifford, and 2-year-old Thalthice, I guess that's how you say it, Adams. 
Um, there was also Peachy. Um, James William, born in August 1880, an Indian fisherman counted in the Mattaponi Indian town in the household of his mother, Hesta Almond, in 1900. All right, and then it says Thornton Almond, born about 1844, was a 58-year-old 58, 58 Indian fisherman counted in the 1900 census for West Point, King William County, with his wife Elizabeth, mother of six children, then living, who included Winnie R. and Pocahontas. For the Chancery case, he stated that he was about 53 or 54, not married on March 6, 1895, and that Elizabeth Twopence lived with him in his three-room house. She had six children at the time. On April 9, 1896, he was called Alman. He was called Alman Thornton, Indian son of Thornton and Eliza Thornton when he married Elizabeth Twopence, an Indian daughter of Billy and Polly Twopence. He, a fisherman, and Elizabeth Almond were counted in the 1900 census for the Mattaponi Indian town with children Minnie R. and Pocahontas. In 1910, Elizabeth was a 65-year-old widowed Indian on the Mattaponi Indian reservation with her daughter Pocahontas. Her father was said to have been a white man and her mother a Pocahontas Indian. They were the parents of Minnie R., born August 1888, Pocahontas, born October 1892. All right, let's keep it moving. Now we're going to talk about uh, John B. Altman. Born about 1848, was a 22-year-old Indian farmer counted in the 1870 census for King William County with $125 personal estate. Listed in the household of Mary E. Allman, who had $100 in real estate, both of them having married in December. He married Mary Coheran about 1869 and was chief of the Mattaponi Indians in 1893. According to the Chancery suit, Mary C. was counted in the 1900 census for Mattaponi Indian Town, a widow with seven living children. All right, and it says uh, Callie, born February 1872, a teamster in 1900, summoned by the King William County Court on October 1st, 1899 as administrator of John B. Aldman to show cause why judgment should not be entered against him. Henry Adams and E.R. Aldman for, for $128 when his father, John B. Aldman, failed to pay for land he had purchased that was part of Thornton Aldman's estate. All right, next we got Tommy. Born about February 1874, a teamster in 1900 called William Thomas Aldman, a 34-year-old 30, a Indian, son of James and Mary Aldman, when he married Carrie Adams, daughter of George and Margaret Adams, on March 4, 1908, in King William County. He was an Indian listed in his, in his own household with wife Carrie, daughter A.C., and 50-year-old widowed mother-in-law, Margaret Adams, in 1910. George Adams was a mulatto listed in the, in the Aquinton King William County household of Miles and Mary Adams, who owned $480 in real estate in 1870. All right, let's keep it moving. Uzelia, born March 1878, a dressmaker, daughter of J.B. and M.C. Aldman, married John B. Bradby, son of Ed and Katie Bradby, in King William County on December 4th, 1907. John W. born November 1879, a day laborer in 1900, 
Arthur, born January 1883, a day laborer in 1900. Martha, born September 1888. Lucianne B., born October 1891. All right, let's keep it moving. Um, Alexander Richard Allman, born about 1849, testified in Richmond City on October 30th, 1871, for the claim of his brother-in-law, Terrell Bradby, that he witnessed the Confederate forces destroying Terrell's house on Pamunkey Indian Island as they used it to build quarters for themselves. Then it says, uh, Alexander was identical to E.R. Richard Allman, according to testimony of his brother John Allman, on March 6, 1895. He was married to Alice in 1873 when their daughter Delilah was born. He was a 36-year-old widower, son of Thornton and Eliza Allman, when he married Pinky Langston an Indian daughter of Jack and Ellie Langston on January 27, 1887 in, Kings, in King William County. Pinky's father, Jack Langston, son of Gennaro Langston and Indy S. Sampson, married Ellen Willer, daughter of Emmeline Willer on December 10, 1857 in King William County. E.R. was counted as an Indian fisherman with wife Emmeline, daughter Haywood L., and son A.R. in 1900. Leah Langston, age 65, was listed as a lodger in their household. Leah was a 23-year-old mulatto listed in the household of 61-year-old mulatto Nancy Langston in the 1860 census for King William County. Richard was an Indian carpenter who owned his own home on the Pamunkey Indian Reservation with wife Pinky and 11-year-old son Augustine in 1910. Alexander and his family were listed as Pamunkey Indians in the 1930 census. Their photos are shown above. Alexander Richard was the father of, and it says, uh, Delilah, born about 1873, daughter of E.R. and Alice Allman, married Lee Andrew Hawks, October 20th, 1898, King William County marriage. Lee A. Hawks was listed as a mulatto carpenter with Indian wife Delilah, a midwife, with their children and his 57-year-old widowed mulatto mother, Margaret Hawks, in the 1910 census for Petersburg. Lee may have been related to Samuel Hawks, a slave free in Nottaway County who married Matilda Dungy, according to the December 1935 Cass County, Michigan death certificate of their daughter, Martha Day. Virginia, born about 1884, Indian daughter of E.R. Alice Allman, married Journey Miles, son of James P. Miles, February 5th, 1902, in a uh, King William County marriage at Indian Town. All right, so that was the Almond family. And we actually got some surprises in the Almond family history. So, um, sounds like uh, they uh, were living in the. Um, Mattapony, uh Indian town. Um, and uh, the county that comes up a lot in this was uh, Glo Gloucester. But uh, we did get a lot of surnames in there and a lot of people that popped up in there. Um, and it also talked about um, the uh, census uh, for that particular town in that county. Um, so if these names come up in your ancestry, um, I would definitely do some digging and find out a little bit more about um, these people and, uh, you know, 
kind of like that uh, census I showed yesterday. They probably have a similar census in this other county that uh, probably tells about um, who these people are. All right. So again, that was the Almond family. And uh, let's keep it moving. Let's get into the Alvis family. All right. Here we go. Catherine Alvis, born, say, 1720, was the mother of a nine-year-old free Negro boy named William Alvis, who was bound apprentice to Robert Crawley of York County on May 21st, 1750. Then it says uh, she was the mother of William, born about 1741, Israel, born about 1743, Patience, born say 1745, paid as a witness for John Poe in his York County suit against Anthony and Jasper Peters on March 18, 1765, and Emmanuel, born, say 1747. All right, let's keep it moving. William uh, Alvis, born about 1741, was a bound apprentice to Robert Crawley of York County on uh, May 21st, 1750. He, he ran away on February 28th, 1751, and Crawley placed an ad in the November 14th, 1751 issue of the Virginia Gazette, describing him as a 12-year-old Negro who was said to live at Brunswick. He registered in Petersburg on August 14th, 1800, a dark brown free mulatto man, five feet, six and a half inches high, 60 years old, born free, and raised in the county of York. And then it says uh, he was the father of Anne, born, say, 1772, the mother of William Alvis, who registered in Petersburg on February 24th, 1812, a brown mulatto man or lad, Five feet, five feet five and a half inches high, 17 years old, born free and raised in the county of Chesterfield, son of Ann Alvis, a free woman. Okay, and it shows where you can find that info. Then we got Nancy, born about 1774, registered in Petersburg on August 14th, 1800, a dark brown mulatto woman, five feet six and a half inches high, spare made with short bushy hair, 26 years old, daughter of William Alvis, born free and raised in the county of Chesterfield. And it shows where you can find her info. All right, next we got Elizabeth, born about 1778, registered in Petersburg on August 14th, 1800, a dark brown mulatto woman, Five feet four and a half inches high, 20 years old, short bushy hair, daughter of William Alvis. And then it shows where you can find her info. All right, let's keep it moving. Next, we got uh, Israel Alvis, born about 1743, had a child named William Always by Martha Armfield and Brutton Parish on April 26, 1765. He called Israel Always, and his wife Martha, free mulattas, were married by March 13, 1767, when their daughter Elizabeth Always was born. And it shows where you can find her info. Um, he was presented by the York County Court on November 19, 1770, for selling rum without a license and was one of 40 people presented by the York County Court on November 15, 1773, for absenting themselves, uh, absenting themselves from their parish church. On November 15, 1779, he was presented for failing to list his tithables. It was taxable in York County on eight cattle in 1782, nine cattle and three horses in 1784 and taxable on a slave in 1796 and 1797. 
All right. He was the father of William, born April 26, 1765, a 16 to 21 year old tithable in the household of Israel Alvis in 1785 and taxable in his own household until 1802. Elizabeth, born March 13, 1767, in Burton Parish, married William Davenport. July 7, 1796, York County Bond. Emmanuel, born, say, 1774, taxable in York County from 1795 to 1797, and a free Negro, taxable in Richmond City in 1814. All right. Um, it says Emmanuel Alvis, born, say, 1747, was a soldier serving in the Revolution on June 15th, 1778, and June 21st, 1779, when the York County Court allowed his wife, Mildred Alvis, pay for her substance. He was called Emmanuel Alvis in his, ditch, in his discharge, which stated that he enlisted on September 25th, 1777, under Captain Samuel Timpson. Uh, it says to serve in the state regiment of artillery for three years, and he served that time. Um, he was taxable in York County on four cattle in 1785, taxable on two tithes in 1797, 1798, 1802, 1803, 1804, or excuse me, 1805, and they tithe in 1806 and 1807. All right, it says, perhaps Mildred was the Millie Alvis, who was head of a household of one free Negro and mulattoes over 16 in 1813. He may have been the father of Israel, born, say, 1771, called Israel Alvis Jr. When he was uh, taxable in York County in 1792, he was head of a household of two free Negroes and mulattoes over 16 one of whom was tithable in 1813, and head of a York County household of two other free in 1810. He registered in York County on July 7, 1799. Israel Alvis, Jr., 5 feet 6 inches, uh, 23 years old of age, dark complexion, with a flat nose, wide mouth, and a voice inclined, inclined to be hoarse. All right, and then we got Nancy, born about 1779, obtained a certificate of freedom in Chesterfield County on September 8, 1806. Dark mulatto complexion, huh? Dark mulatto complexion, 27 years old, spare made, short bushy hair, born free. All right, next we got John, about 1780, or excuse me, John, born about 1782, registered in York County on October 15th, 1804, a dark mulatto man about five feet seven and a quarter inches high, 22 years of age. He has a, he has a thick nose, short woolly hair, born of free parents in the parish of, Br of Brunton in County of York. He was head of a York County household of six other free in 1810 and four free Negroes and mulattoes over 16, two of whom were tithable in 1813. All right, next we got uh, Samuel, born about 1791, registered in York County on December 16, 1822, a dark mulatto, about 31 years of age, five feet, nine and three-fourths inches high. He was uh, taxable in York County in 1809, and head of a household of two free Negroes and mulattoes, over 16, one of whom was Tyler Bow in 1813. And we got William, born about 1795, registered in New York County on December 16, 1822. A dark mulatto, about 27 years of old, five feet, ten and a half inches high, born free. All right, so again, 
this uh, thing with the mulatto. Dark mulatto. Okay. We're going to keep it moving. Just keep that in your mind. William, born about 1778, called William Alvis Jr. When he was taxable in York County in 1799. Registered in York County on October 15, 1804. Yellowish complexion, about 26 years of age, 5 feet 8, eight inches high, born free in the parish of Bruton. All right. Then we got Adam, born about 1787, taxable in York County in 1807, head of a York County household of five, five other free in 1810. He registered in York County on... June 21st, 1819, a free person born of free parents in the county of York is a small black fellow, about 32 or 33 years of age, five feet, seven inches high, short, knotty hair, small black eyes, born free. All right, then we got James, head of a county, York County household of three, other free in 1810, Fanny, born about 1789, Registered in York County on December 16, 1822. A very fat mulatto, about 33 years of age. She has long hair, fierce eyes, born free. All right, keep it moving. Next, we got Sally, born about 1793. Registered in York County on December 16, 1822. About 29 years of age. Short curly hair, born free. Then we got uh, William, born about 1795, registered in Chesterfield County on April 7th, 1822. I have known William Alvis for 12 or 15 years. I have also known his mother and other relations who have always passed as free persons of color, five feet six three eighths color brown age 27 born free all right then we got uh elizabeth born about 1806 registered in york county on november 1st 1831 tawny complexion about 25 years of age three feet five and a fourth inches high long face large nose Thick pouting lips and long hair, which she wears plated. And then we got Mariah, born about 1810, registered in York County on October 17th, 1831. A mulatto woman, about 21 or 22 years of age, uh, five feet four and one fourth inches high, straight black hair. All right, so that was the. All this, all this family, and it looks like their name got changed somewhere along the way to always, and then you can see the different spellings here. All right, so again, if those are your people, um, that surname comes up in your genealogy, uh, this is a good place to check because it looks like they were in the um, looks like York County, um to start out with and then I seen uh, Petersburg and different places like that um, so yeah definitely check into that if that's your people all right so next we will be getting into next time we do this series we will start out again with the uh, Ampy family all right relatives so let me uh, stop screen sharing real quick so I can talk to you all right, so uh, once again, we uh, found out some interesting things on this particular um, uh, family history that we were checking into. Um, so, yeah, you never know what you're going to find on these uh, genealogies. So that's why it is extremely important to look into all this um, so that, you know, um, you can find, you know, who your people were. And... Um, the other thing I wanted to mention too, um, possibly sometime this week, uh, 
myself, um, the uh, brother um, Wanunksi, um, some of you know him as Wanagi or Ghost, and uh, a new breed possibly, and maybe uh, Huda Mail uh, might do a uh, live stream. So uh, look out for that. Like I said, it's a possibility, not guaranteed, you know, yet, but uh, we're talking about it. But anyway, relatives, um, I appreciate you all as always uh, for taking the time to watch the videos. Um, one love to everyone out there. I appreciate it uh, from the bottom of my heart. And um, as always, I will see everyone next time. Later.